thought I'd make a tea cosy to match with the oven gloves that I've already showed you in one of the other videos on uh, on YouTube. Um, and again, very quick and very, very simple. This has got to be the easiest way to make a tea cosy. And ultimately, you can have a nice warm pot of tea. My teapot measures uh, around about nine inches across and it's about six inches high. My fabric, I've already pre-cut this, but I've measured it to around about 13 inches across. I cut out a rectangle of fabric, 13 inches in one direction, and then height-wise 11 inches, and I've just rounded off the corners. Now I did that, I found um, a hat box lid, which fit perfectly, or you could just make a template from a plate and cut either corner out that way if you don't have anything the right size. And what I've cut is two pieces of my outer fabric. It's the one with the cats on because it's going to match my oven gloves, remember. Make sure the cats are the right way around. Then I've also got two pieces of lining fabric and two pieces of wadding. And these are all cut to the same size. I'm only using a polyester wadding um, because I just want it to keep the tea warm. It's not got to be particularly heat proof. Um, right, first thing I'm going to do is to use my stick and stay or a repositionable adhesive if you have any just to secure the wadding to the outside fabric. You don't have to use this but it just helps to stop the wadding from moving around. So just put a, a little bit of spray on there, not too much. And place my wadding over the top. I'm not too concerned at this point if the wadding's a little bit bigger and uh, it does tend to move a little bit when you're sewing anyhow. I can always trim that back later. And that's my second side. Right, so. Then the next thing I'm going to do is to sew the lining fabric to the bottom of each one of these sections. So my cat fabric needs to go face down, wadding upside and just line across the bottom and I'm going to stitch straight across this line. Um, this is where you can start trimming back the excess um, wadding if there is any. So just a long straight stitch through all of those layers. And I'm just sewing around about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And again, your you wadding may move, it doesn't matter, trim it back afterwards. So, and then do the same with the other side. So I need my outside fabric face to face with my lining fabric. And again, just sew straight across the bottom. I can actually see through my wadding, so I know I'm sewing along the edge of the fabric. But again, if it's a little bit too long, you can trim that back beforehand. It makes it easier. to open up my two pieces, lay them face together and I'm going to sew all the way around. Now I'm going to start from the side section here because I need those seams to match up perfectly because you will see that when you turn it the other way around. So I'm just going to pop a pin in there to secure it, a pin in the other side doesn't matter if the lining doesn't meet, but it does matter if these seams don't meet, because you, you'll see that. And I'm making sure that's nice and flat. Just one more pin in the top should secure it. And again, I'm going to start from this seam. I'm going to, I need to sew all the way around, but leave a gap at the bottom of the lining so that I can turn it the right way around. It's around the corner, and again, 
I'm not worried about this um, wadding moving slightly because I can always trim that back afterwards, it will happen. I'm just feeding that underneath my foot so it's not, not pushing it too much. Out of shape and then back down to the other seam. Remember this is the important bit because this is where I need those seams to match up. And then around the lining. Remember I need to leave a gap at the end for turning. So I'll just reverse a few stitches back. Leave a gap of around about three inches. I'm reversing the stitches back so that when I turn them they're a, they're a little bit more stable because that's going to be the point that it gives if it's going to give. And back down to the other side. Make sure my stitches line up with where I started, which is just there. So I'll take my pins out. And turn it all the right way around. Just before I push the lining up inside my tea cosy, I'm just going to sew across the top of that hole with um, just with a top stitch. If it was something like a handbag that you're making like this, then I'd sew that by hand. Um, but I don't think anyone's going to be looking too closely at the inside of the tea cosy, so I'm just going to go straight across that hole. I've tucked in the edges so it makes it a bit neater. And then push the lining up inside the tea cosy. Now, at this point, I'd press it. I haven't got an iron with me here. But I'd press that all around the bottom so that the lining doesn't pop down. If you wanted to leave a little bit showing, then you can do. It makes quite a nice border. And to really secure that, if you wanted to, you could then go across that with your sewing machine and just put a top stitch on it. But there you go. There's my uh, tea cosy, which is going to match with my um, with my oven gloves. So my kitchen's going to look nice and coordinated.